So I, I would say that as, a, as, my, um, as this job kind of got on, I, there were times where things got very personal. And I have four kids, and two of them are still really small and were born um, while I was doing this work. And uh, when one of them was quite young, the New York Times came out with an article about breastfeeding. And of course, it gets very personal. These are very personal decisions. I was nursing my kid, in fact, but um, I felt that the benefits to breastfeeding were a little bit overstated in the media. And I want to give you, uh, first show you a little video that was not made by New York Times. Uh, I'm going to get to New York Times coverage in a moment, but was actually made by the Department of Health and Human Services mm -hmm. about nursing. So let's see if this will. Studies show babies who are breastfed are less likely to develop ear infections, respiratory illnesses, and diarrhea. Babies were born to be breastfed. Be breastfed. Okay, so that was a pretty shocking video. In fact, there was so much outrage over it, they did eventually <laughs> take it down. Um, but, you know, the, the words of the, art of the statement was that studies show that uh, breastfeeding will reduce the risk of ear infection and diarrhea, which is actually pretty well established scientifically. Um, but uh, the image, of course, was a little bit more shocking and really suggested that you're taking quite a big risk, sort of like riding mechanical bull, um, to not breastfeed. So the question became, is it dangerous to use infant formula? This is me and my fourth son, who's now 20 months, very cute. Um, is it dangerous to use infant formula? And um, so New York Times came up with an article that was titled Breastfeed or Else and had a warning, I mean, sorry, a teaser that read, warning, public health officials have determined that not breastfeeding may be hazardous to your baby's health. So pretty shocking. The lead scientist was quoted, the lead scientist on the study that they reported on, just like it's risky to smoke during pregnancy, it's risky not to breastfeed after. So the comparison there is a pretty stark comparison, like smoking during pregnancy. And for those of you who don't know, smoking during pregnancy, um, among many uh, things that it's bad for also leads to premature birth, so it has very serious consequences. Um, they claim that it reduces the risk for ear infections and flu, which is actually fairly uncontroversial, that is, that is true. Also for IB, obesity, diabetes, sudden infant death syndrome, asthma, and leukemia, and all of those are actually quite controversial within the scientific community. And the article also noted that IQ rates increase with nursing. That turned out to be simply false. So the IQ one is kind of an interesting case of confounding factors. They measured IQ of women who nursed and IQ of women who didn't nurse. Um, I mean, sorry, uh, they measured the IQ of the children and they forgot to take into account the mother's IQ. And when they adjusted for the mother's IQ, they found that it actually did not influence IQ rates. And this is really Im important because one of the um, uh, facts demographically about nursing is that poor women and less educated women are less likely to nurse. Um, so there are a lot of things that can be conflated here when, when, when you have other social factors that influence why someone makes a decision that they do. Um, so it turns out, in fact, smoking is much more dangerous than not nursing. Um, one of the things that we found was that the studies on nursing are actually really poorly done, and part of that is because it's very difficult to do that kind of study. There, there's no way you could do a randomized controlled trial. That's kind of the, the gold standard, uh, the golden standard to do it. Uh, to compare groups where you assign one group to nurse and one group not to nurse and then see what happens. Uh, you know, people like to make their own decisions and they make those decisions for a variety of reasons. So it's very difficult to evaluate it when there's so many influences. Um, there's a lot of studies didn't control for confounding factors. Um, uh, for example, the increase in asthma turned out could be largely attributed to the fact that the parents smoked. Back when they first did some studies on nursing or some of the earlier studies that now considered old, say from the 80s, actually didn't ask, it didn't think about, you know, whether parents who smoked in the home could influence the children's 
uh, health. And those same parents were more likely to use formula. So again, it's very difficult to know what to attribute a health consequence to. Um, demographics um, are really important in this. A lot of the studies that are used to justify the recommendation that women um, nurse absolutely is based on research in third world countries where water quality is really different, health care is really different, and these are important issues. If you have bad water, you can have many more digestive and diarrhea problems with the babies, and they do die, and it's very sad. But this is not typically what happens in a first world country. So uh, it's a really important question when you ask whether you want to tell women that they might kill their children by giving them formula. Another question is what's the magnitude of the benefit? Um, and I actually spent quite some time trying to really assess if you take the studies on nursing at face value and you don't question how the research results were come to, but just take it at face value, if you look at the most aggressive assessments of the leukemia risk due to not nursing, um, you find that that risk is, is about the same or a little bit less than the risk of driving with an infant in the car with a car seat properly restrained. So this kind of comparison, I, I just want to give this to you. You walk into a pediatrician's office with a young child and they will tell you, you absolutely need to nurse your child for the first year of their life. This is really, really important. They tell you, you know, you could get leukemia and it could die if you don't. But I've never walked into a pediatrician's office where they say, do not get into a car for the next year. I don't care how carefully you restrain your car, you could get in a car accident and your child could die. Now this is, these are true statements, again, taking the research at face value about <coughs> leukemia. And uh, they're difficult, perhaps, to adjust your life to not being in a car, right? And so, in fact, nobody tells you that. It sometimes, for some women, it's very difficult to, you, to nurse as opposed to use formula. And I, I think that in a, in a personal way, I felt, look, the amount of risk to a child driving in a car in an appropriate car seat for their age, properly restrained during the first year of their life, is a risk most of us take. And um, it, it's a little bit unfair to put nursing in that same uh, to, to be told not to, not to use formula if that's the level of risk. And I, I just kind of wanted to give you a sense, again, of the, the, the magnitude of the problem. Um, and again, what's the human side? Um, a lot of women felt really awful about the New York Times coverage. And that's because why it is that women nurse or don't nurse is extremely personal. It could be related to their job. It could be related to their emotional state. Uh, with regard to their connection to the child. It could be um, for health consequences. But for sure, this kind of coverage makes those women feel just like they're the worst mothers in the whole world. And it's just, um, I think, it has very bad consequences. Um, and I have a lot more to say about nursing if anyone wants to get me afterwards. I can't, I can't stop talking about it. But it, 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 <laughs> it, it, it's one of these things, um, by the way, uh, after writing the work that I did in which I said made so many of the points that I just made to you, I got quite a lot of hate mail just to say how much people really, really are personally um, invested in that question and how much, uh, and, and anyone who says that the benefits are a little bit overstated um, uh, is, is clearly not a good parent. So I just wanted to give you a sense of how much people are quite attached, from nurses even.